Hello everyone, my name is Taylor. And I'm Kelly. And we are the co-hosts of Jumping Bomb Audio, the podcast all about Joshi Pro Wrestling here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. Every other Monday, we are with you talking about the biggest news in Joshi, along with show reviews, previews, and much, much more. So if you're new to Joshi or you've been a longtime fan, this is the show for you. We've got something for everyone here. So check us out, Jumping Bomb Audio. Hi, my name is Tyler Fornis, and I am the co-host of The Good, The Bad, and The Hunky here on the Voice Wrestling Podcasting Network. Every week, my co-host Fred Moreland and I discuss all the happenings of all elite wrestling and everything going on in the universe of Tony Khan. We talk about Dynamite, we talk about Rampage, and we will talk about Collision when the time comes as well, along with all the appearances outside of AEW from all the best talents in all elite wrestling. This is one of the more cohesive wrestling companies in the entire world, and we discuss every intricacy about it, including the unique booking of Tony Khan that is both a huge positive and a major detriment. Check us out every single Thursday here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Welcome to Jumping Bomb Audio. everyone and welcome back to Jumping Bomb Audio, the number one show all about the world of Joshi Pro Wrestling. My name is Taylor and for the first time ever, I am here looking across into the marvelous eyes of my good friend and co-host, Kelly. Coming to you live from the New Yorker Hotel. <laughs> the iconic New Yorker Hotel yep. here in New York, New York. The first ever... It's not technically a live episode. Mm. Live to tape. Live to tape. Live to tape. Yeah. Uh, Kelly and I are in the same place for the first time yep. in four years. Four and a half yeah. years. Yeah. We uh, <laughs> met in person. In Japan. In Japan in 2019. Yep. May of 20... June of June, 2019? June. Uh, it was early June, yeah. That was the last time we've seen each other, correct? Yes. I think. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of any. Well, because COVID. Okay, because yes. this is the first time I've flown anywhere since COVID. So, yeah, no, we haven't seen each other. Unless you were at one of the various Chicago AEW shows. I but was I not. No, okay, then, yeah. No, this is the first time. But you come to the... You, the reason you're here in New yes. York is for the toy fair. Yeah, yeah at for New York Toy Fair. The Javits which, Center. Yep. Uh, this is the first time they've had it since COVID. It was going to be oh. last year, and then they canceled it the last minute. And now we're back. We're going to be off next year. Going to be back on in 2025, but that one's going to be in February, which is its usual time. Okay. And then we're going to New Orleans. <laughs> Oh. That just got announced. We're moving. It'll be three years in New Orleans. Because I remember you coming. Yeah. Previous. Like, I had a memory of it, but for some reason my memory was, like, 2021. But yeah. that doesn't even really no. make any sense. Because <laughs> nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. Um, at that time. Well, we're excited yeah. to be together. Yep. Kelly has told me, privately off air... That he needs to slash wants to spend time discussing various aspects of New York City. Oh my god. I Is that correct? Yes. I I don't know how you live here. <laughs> like, this is a town I like to visit. I could never live here. Never. <laughs> that is also um 
my, my mother's opinion. Yeah. My mother visits, and I agree with my mother, my mother would do terribly in New York City. Yeah. She very much has the wrong personality <laughs> to live here. Uh, I did note this in that we are in Kelly's hotel room yep. at the New Yorker. Yep. We had to take a long elevator ride <laughs> up to the 37th, the 37th floor. floor. And we were in the elevator with a number of people. Yep. Now, the traditional New York move would be to take that elevator ride yep. in complete and utter silence. <laughs> Yeah. That was not the case with Kelly, who talked to yep. another guy, a very interesting man in yeah. the elevator. He had the Toy Fair badge on, so yes, we're both all punchy. We've been we've been out on the floor for since nine o'clock doing stuff, talking about being thirty-seven years old. Yep, yeah, the experience uh, of being thirty-seven. You know that guy was thirty-seven for a full year. Yeah, yeah. I heard that. Yeah. I was on that elevator <laughs> silently, sitting there, going, "Oh, this is out of my comfort zone." <laughs> Of standing in silence. Yeah, but yeah. No, like the first. So the first day I'm here, I'm gonna walk across the street, and there's this lady who's just sitting there, standing there doing the finger guns. Got a little jig to her. I'm like, well, this is interesting. All right. And she kind of speeds across the street. And I'm like, oh, all right. She's got somewhere to be. Keep walking. Go forward. And there she is talking to a guy by this on the side of the building. Yeah. And she's like, I got five dollars. And the guy's like, you're not getting good crack for that. <laughs> so I was like, sweet, early drug deal. There you go. She wasn't getting that good crack. Uh, what was that? On Friday, I saw what I'm pretty sure was a dead guy just laying on the ground out in the street. That was cool. Saw a dude trying to help someone cross the street. This was maybe Saturday night? Trying to help a guy cross the street. He was, like, old and not with it. And this other car was, like, honking the horn. And the guy's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm trying to help him. And then the car that was honking just drove into the dude. <laughs> At which point the guy, I didn't notice this, my buddy noticed. The dude had like a box cutter in his hand. And he starts chasing after the car. There is a cop behind them going, you know, whoop, 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 whoop. Like, please stop. Please stop doing this. The one guy stops his car. He gets out. They're yelling at each other. The police car is like, whoop, 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 whoop. The guy turns around to yell at the cop car. He's like, fuck off, I'm doing something here. At which point, the other guy gets in the car and drives back off. And the cop is pretty much like, fair enough, and keeps on going. <laughs> All right. I will say you are at the Javits Center, which is, uh, for those unfamiliar with New York, there is absolutely no life around. It's the Javits Center, yeah. which is the convention center in New York, yeah. and like closed auto repair buildings yep it's a lot of just nothing for a while <laughs> it's nothing for a while then you have to walk a couple of blocks and then you can get to some places but yeah that's a place of uh the javits center is very nice they it just, is they, it's great they just finished redoing it i think yeah so, no it's a nice building is the toy fair in the whole thing or yes. just in the main it's the whole thing okay. all like four floors of it yeah it's a lot of space to cover, so I'm... I have, like, an extra wing now yep. or whatever it is. Yep. They're in, like, the conference rooms and shit, too. Like, there's... There's so much. There's so many toys. <laughs> I saw uh, former WCW world champion David Arquette there. The uh, certified Bob Ross instructor. Certified Bob Ross instructor. He was just painting them happy little trees. He was having a damn good time. <laughs> I'm... I wonder if he got it before Bob Ross died or after Bob Ross died. I don't know. Died. I don't know. It might have been just like, hey, I'm sober now and I have a lot of free time. What should I get into? I guess it's like the Bob Ross system. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. don't necessarily have to be trained by Bob. Yeah. Ross yeah, they've got a whole... Has been dead for... Farm system now. 20 years? No. Something. Eh, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Well, we're inside. Kelly is safe from the... Outside. Uh, maniac world of New York City. <laughs> I, I was walking to the bodega to get breakfast on the way to the Javits this morning, and there is this guy, because we had to walk past the police station, mm -hmm. and there's this guy just looking at the cops, and he's like, they're all fucking kids now. It's like, they weren't like that when I was a kid. They were men. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> well, we are here to talk about some Joshi, which we're going to attempt to do. Before we do that, we have to get our plugs in, of course. Follow us on Twitter. At J Bomb Audio, we sent out a tweet this week looking uh, for questions. So if you're not following us on Twitter, 
should fucking uh, follow you us. You missed out on that. You could have asked a great question. Hey, you could have asked us anything. Uh, and we are open books. Yeah. I was I was surprised. Maybe I didn't emphasize it enough, but we got some pretty we got some great questions. Yeah. Uh, but mostly very straightforward questions. Yeah. I mean, I did appreciate uh, who was that sad robot? It was just like, hey, Kelly, talk about some nonsense, and buddy, I got you. We've already I got, got into it. Here. Yeah, we're gonna get more. I got more. Uh, you can follow Kelly. At Comic E. Kelly, have you been yes. tweeting at all about your I've been tweeting a little bit. Adventures? I've been more on Instagram, okay. uh, just posting toy pictures. What's your Instagram? Uh, I think it's the same, but with an underscore at the end, because at some point I must have made a Comic Geek Kelly just on its own Instagram and then completely and then lost it. access to it. <laughs> all right. And you can follow me at Tay Mambo. Uh I don't often tweet about yeah. life in New York, but... <laughs> I'm desensitized. Yeah, it's to just it your now. life. Yes, uh, living here for you, you twelve don't, years. You, finger guns, McGee is over there, and you're yeah. like, that doesn't even register to you. I put my headphones in, and I'm just walking by. Yeah. Oh, I thought of another good one. We were going to eat the other night. I don't remember where, but we're walking, and there's just this dude with the loudest music I may have ever heard coming out of his pants. He has a clown mask on the front, a clown mask on the back. And he is just up on a bar doing push-ups. We're going to Five Guys, that's right, because I finished my milk sh- my milkshake there because I was like, I'm not having that dude fight me for this on the <laughs> walk back. He wasn't there when we walked back. Which was even scarier, honestly, because then it was like... He any, could be there. Any one of these people could be <laughs> scary clown man. <laughs> Gotta motivate your workout somehow. Yeah. Some people do it. But we are going to be talking about the Five Star Grand Prix finals we are going to be talking about uh, a big result in wave yep. uh, a big title change we're going to be talking about suke bond yeah. because i was there live for the experience I'm of a lifetime still so bummed they didn't run a week later so i could have gone too uh and then we are going to be talking a bunch of upcoming shows including moondom is that that's the, the new stardom yeah. english focused Oh. Um, small promotion. Okay. Um, so is that not the, that's not the spooky show then? No, not the okay. spooky show. Okay, okay, No. I don't, I don't believe they've announced anything further for the spooky show except it's happening. Happening, yeah. Uh, Nagoya Golden Fight coming up. And then of course, Wrestle Princess 4. Yeah. We got the big preview coming up, which we'll be talking about. But let's kick it off with Stardom, the five star Grand Prix Finals, and my notes are all over the place. Well, I can't help you there, because I've been so busy with Toy Fair, I haven't watched a second of it. Well, let me tell you, it happened at Yokohama Budokan in front of 2,507 fans. I did watch it, watched the whole thing. Well, not the whole thing, because uh, I found out later there was a battle royal to open the show, which I did not see. Uh, one by Suzu Suzuki. Oh, okay. A uh, omen. Not yeah. omen. Omen sounds negative. So but... was it just everyone in the five star? Well, no. I no. think it was mostly everyone who didn't have a match on that night. And Suzu, uh, because of okay. injuries. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, injury to Utami. Yeah. The big news of the, that makes sense. of the last two weeks. Off the card. And not eligible. All our picks out the window, really. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, looking at the finals, which we'll get to in a second, I thought uh, Kelly and I could not really have done any worse no. than what no. we predicted. Absolutely Now, of course, not. we didn't know that Utami was no. going to get uh, injured. She has a cervical hernia, yep. which it was just announced today, that... as well that... Natsupoi has a cervical yeah. hernia, uh, an injury I had never heard of and we got until two of a week ago, and now I've heard of two people having it. So is, it's like cervical, like, your spine? Yes, and okay, cervical not... hernia. Because at first I was like, wait, is it like the cervix or the spine? Kelly, here's a very simple explanation okay. for you. It's the displacement of the nucleus pulpu- pulposus of the invertebral disc. Ah, yes, of course. Quite. <laughs> of course. Um... Oh, so it's oh, like it's I a, think it's a it's I, I just, think it's a ruptured or a bulging disc. Oh, okay. Uh, is a spine condition that occurs when the gel-like center of a spinal disc ruptures through a weak area in the tough outer wall. Similar 
<laughs> to the filling being squeezed out of a jelly donut. I, I don't know what this site is. Oh, it's for a literal, like, doctor's office? You know? That first sentence, I'm not going to this doctor's office. But, you know, it does explain it pretty well. Like It I, does explain I it pretty it well. Um, oh, and now we're looking at pictures which you can't see, but... So the gel comes up, and then it pinches the nerve. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't want my jelly coming out of me. Uh, who is affected? Herniated discs are most common in people in their 30s and 40s. Um, I just want to see... Um, in most cases, the pain from a herniated disc will get better within a couple of days and completely resolve in four to six weeks. Okay. Okay. So there you go. Not too bad. There also is options for surgery, but it seems like that's a more radical uh, thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, so just let the jelly go in on its own instead of yes. putting it back. Or do, you know, ice. Yeah. Pack. Do you uh, ever do you ever watch Lost? Oh, I love Lost. So I don't know why. There's one scene that's stuck with me yes. forever, and it's when Jack is talking about doing a surgery, and he like sliced someone's spine wrong. Yes, and all of their nerves came popping out like spaghetti. Yes, and as that's horrified me to this day, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, I do not want my spaghetti to fall out, Mister Surgeon. <laughs> but then in that scene, she learns that he's like, oh, I screwed up the surgery, but. He didn't screw it up yeah. in the end. Yeah. So maybe you do want spaghetti. Yeah. Um, but anyway. <laughs> so really, our, the human body is just a bunch of spaghetti so bunch and jelly of, donuts. That's right. Um, I. But anyway, I did watch the show. It was a show that I thought... Um, I really, at the end of the day, I thought it was fine. Okay. I think most stuff I had in the three and a half range. Okay. Um, I actually looked on Cage Match, and I was pretty in line with... What they had, the top match of the show was the main event, which was Suzu Suzuki versus Micah, which is currently at 8.62, which is like four and a quarter. Yeah, that's solid. Essentially. Um, but then I went on a Voice of Wrestling Discord, multiple people calling it a show of the year contender, hmm. which um, I briefly mentioned. I didn't see it that way, especially compared to the opening night. The opening the night's incredible. Yeah. So good. Uh, that was a clear, like, night of the whole tournament for me. Um, but I thought it was a fine show. Most of my, you know, some of the matches I didn't even really have um, that many notes. A lot of good finishing sequences. I do have to call out um, Momo Watanabe and Azumi did a move where it looked, I believe, Azumi was going to attempt a Canadian Destroyer. Okay. And she sort of did the like a bounce preparation, and as she was bouncing, Momo stood up, and Azumi went into the air, and as she was coming down, Momo kicked her in the head. That's cool. As it hell. was a great sequence. I was like, "That's really cool." Um, then that was pretty much the beginning of the finishing sequence, which I thought was uh, really great. Man, you could have had that just that be the finish. Yeah, it was uh, very cool. Um, really liked Sayori and Mina. Um, thought they had another great finishing sequence. Sayori's bend over pin, if she can get it, like sometimes she That's can't kind quite of an get issue, it. Yeah. But when she gets it, it is very dramatic because you're like, yeah, this is it. And yeah. then, you know. There is a certain a size of people she can't pull it off with. Yeah. Or sometimes it's just sort of like slow and you're like, oh, just get there. Please, yeah. please, please. Mina had a spinning. Uh, electric chair face slam, I guess. All right. And I was like, oh, what a move. That's the finish. And then wasn't. Um, had to call out Sayori, who I think had a great tournament, but we'll She talk really about that. did. She's, based on what I've seen, I'd say she's the MVP. Just always working really hard. Uh, possibly, although. Now, Kelly, you have not seen Wrestle Dream, have you? I have not. So I'm going to anti-spoil. I guess you I'll anti-spoil you. Can anti -spoil. Spoil you can spoil. It's fine. Uh, Mariah, does, Mariah May, the whole thing, yeah. Dave was reporting that she was definitely going to be on the show. Yeah. Of course, that would have been um, pretty tricky to do because this show was on yeah. Saturday night in Japan, which was like Saturday morning in the U.S. Yeah. Um, she would have had to like, and she, but she was on first. She would have had to go and then fly. Mm -hmm. Would have been a tight turnaround. 
do, I guess doable, but Mariah May did not show up yeah. in AEW. Um, we know for sure she's leaving because she said as much. Yes, and she said after the match, you know, she said, I've been the foreign ace, and Hannon was crying, and they were hugging, yeah, and it her, certainly felt like a, like, goodbye. Her Twitter posts have been so cute. Like, the, she just, I don't know if it was just came up, but I just saw it with her and Hannah, and she's like, oh, I found a little sister I always wanted, and, like, her and Waka and stuff. I'm like, god damn it. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, lots of upsets. Uh, Ami Sore beating Siri on the last night. You know, you need a lot of these upsets. Yeah. Uh, Hazuki beating uh, Natsuka Tora, to which I wrote, everything's coming up me in my notes. <laughs> um, because that was what allowed Suzu to... I believe that's what allowed Suzu to get um, into the finals. That, that makes sense, yeah. The, the, probably the weirdest match of all was Tom and Natsupoi because it felt like the crowd was not into it in any way. Like, Weird. They were very quiet. Hmm. Like, at one point I was like, why is this very quiet? It felt like they worked very well, but in a sort of vacuum of like, oh, this is good, but no. Like, do people not care? It's This seems like a Natsupoi thing. Yeah, I don't know. Where a bunch of nuts play matches, I'm like, this is pretty good work, but the crowd seems like they don't want to make any noise in it. But any then like way. all the Meltier stuff seems to do well. Like they did those photo books and stuff and like people seem to be into it. Maybe I don't know. They're just all all the weird old men are just quietly jerking it to the match. And uh... it's like it could be clapping, but it just it'd just be that. I'm gonna turn on the air conditioning. It's hot in here. Uh, it's getting hot with all these takes. takes. There we go. We hope that the air conditioning will not overpower the microphone. Yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, but we'll see what happens. We're doing it live, folks. <laughs> We're doing it live. Fuck it. Um, and then the final Suzu Suzuki against Micah. Uh, finals that we certainly did not predict. But you know um, what? It made it. It had a build with yeah. those two always doing stuff together. So it's like, hey, they kind of just fell into this. And uh, a great final match. Micah had hit a really cool looking sort of three amigos at one point. Okay. Uh, which I thought was very fun. Uh, and easily the best match of the show um, and the highlight for me. But let's just sort of go through the final standings. Kelly, give me your overall thoughts on, you know, how they did, what you think. Are they going trending up or down? <laughs> Uh, well, unfortunately, in the Red Stars block, first, uh, Saya Kamatani, um... Trending sideways. I would say trending neutral, because yeah, of, could... well, trending down, she got injured. Yeah. Injuries are no good, but not her fault. Zero points, uh, sadly. Yeah. But... Starlight Kid. Yeah, but Starlight Kid, four. four points. I don't like that. Four points, very low. Starlight Kid, I think, is becoming a very divisive... Which is weird. ...wrestler in the world of stardom. I see a lot of people who really don't like her that And much. I do not get that in any regard. <laughs> uh, and I love Starlight Kid, and I... Starlight Kid is one of those people... I wish there was another really strong Joshi promotion, because I think... Yes. It would be good. I mean, she's still very incredibly young. Yeah. Sort of like in the Sari way where it was like, oh, she's going to WWE, but even if she leaves, which she did, yeah. in three years, she'll still be in her 20s. Yeah. And able to do that. But for now, just sort of feels stuck and passed by by many people like Ami Sore. Eight points. Yeah, she's trending upwards, but like at the same time, well, she had a title shot coming up with julia so it's like it makes sense yes. to book her kind of strong which at this point has happened yeah uh the corican happened today no yesterday. yesterday yeah yesterday uh but has not i think as of this time been posted on stardom world so uh we neither of us have seen it no um next hazuki 10 points feels pretty yeah pretty good for i it. mean 10 points is only two points technically off the you know, yeah. Lead. No, she did. She did good. A tight block. Natsupoi eleven. Sure. Solid. 
Same. Mayu Iwatani, 11 points, feels right. You know, yeah. She's always going to be close. She needs to be in the mix, always. In the mix. Any of these people with, you know, one different result could have won the whole thing. Yeah. Siri, another one. Logical, Siri, yeah. at the top. Yeah. It's hard to sort of talk about people who are like, they're great, they're still great. Yeah. They had a good tournament, like everyone. Yeah. Tom, to, champion, needs Tom to champion. be up there. <laughs> Natsuka Tora, 12 points. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I, I think if the plan was... It was going to be Utami versus Tora, then I get it. If that was, in fact, the plan. If it was not, I do not understand it for a second. And then at the top, Suzu and the, I should say, I haven't, I don't even think mention this, the winner Hell yeah. of the Five Star Grand Prix, Suzu Suzuki. Fantastic. I mean, you have to say great. Yes. Unexpected. So I don't happy. think many people had Suzu Suzuki. Nope. Uh, pulling out the victory, so good for her. I never would have expected... Like, I would have named off at least... Or she would have gotten to the finals and lost to someone yeah. w- winning. Because I would have guessed... Yeah, I would have guessed Tora, Tom, Siri, Mayu, Poi, Hazuki ahead of her as people that would... And Saya ahead of her as people that would have made it to the finals in that block. In the Blue Stars block, at the bottom, Hennen, six points. Uh... Is it more points than I expected? I think it is. Yeah, no, it is. I expected... I think I expected two. Yes. I think I expected one win. Yeah. And it would be like, oh, she did it. Like, thank God. Did she get... Did she have a uh, Utami match, or did she get a bye because of the injury? I think she... Because I do not recall. We've been doing... This tournament's been going this for so long. I think she... Oh. Yes, there have been so many matches. She, 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 she. Um, she did not. Okay, so that's. Let me consult. When was that supposed to happen? You guys, there's too many goddamn stardom shows. Go back in my notes here. Notes, notes, notes. Uh, Utami. Utami versus Hannon was supposed to happen on the 24th. Okay. So, when was that? The 24th was one week ago. <laughs> or, give or take. All right. But well, I gotta open... Because I think she got injured on the 20th. Yes, uh, so Hannon had a match against Waka on that show. So, yeah, so... Yes. She should really be at four points. Which is still... That is true. She should be at four points. And also, I do wonder if Mariah was not leaving. Yeah. Because I have a feeling they were like, well, it's the last night and it doesn't really matter for either of these people, so give Hanan the win because she's sticking around. Yeah, especially because so they're points. so close, too. Mariah May, six points. Uh, bon voyage. Yeah. As they say, off to the world of AEW. I guess. That's what everyone's saying. I mean, I guess maybe it doesn't happen. but. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think she'll do well there. She's really talented and she's pretty and blonde. She'll do great. <laughs> uh, Azumi, eight points. Four points better than Starlight Kid, the yeah. connected duo <laughs> Yeah. there. You know, solid. Wish there was more, but winner got 12 points. You have eight. Yeah. Nothing to, you know, be sad about. Utami finishing with eight points through the fluke of injury. So, likely she would have won. So, Mm -hmm. moving on. Yeah. Mina, nine points. Again, feeling pretty... Yeah. I think she had a good tournament. Yeah. I think she sort of established herself. Maybe not in the very top tier, but... No pretty high up it's pretty much where she's where she's slotted now because she'll get these occasional title wins but then like lose it right away uh mirai at 10 points fuck Uh, sure whatever i'm just glad she didn't win i think kelly and i have made our (laughs) opinions clear just sort of just not for me no i don't get it like i just decided it, she's fine. I like her just fine, but like I, other people are just like, oh my god, she's one of the best in the world, and I'm like, I don't, I don't see it. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna yuck your yum. You can enjoy what you like. That's fine. And Mariah's just not for me. She's all right. Speaking of best in the world, Sayuria, no, hey, we had a great tournament uh, as one of the very few, as one of the only. <laughs> 
Yeah, she's the only outsider. I think looking through... Is Suzu officially signed? I don't... I sh- think so. Um... I would assume so, but essentially she the left only, prominence. Yeah, the only largely uh, freelance... And did great. Yeah. Great tournament, great matches. Yeah, I'd still say MVP. Uh, Momo Watanabe, 10 points. Keeping up there. Good for her. Um... You know, started out strong, looked like Momo 2023, and then yeah. couldn't quite get there. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm glad, really sad about Momo. I'm, but I'm glad she's not a complete just joke, you know? Yeah, she could be down at four points. Yeah, exactly. Uh, she's in the mix. She's in the mix, which is good. I just sort of wish, again, like Starlight Kid, maybe there was another company that would yeah take her and could do something more exciting with her because that, you know title reign she had was incredible Mm -hmm. and it's a bummer that she's just sort of hanging around and she's still stupid young julia 11 points yep a very julia score yep and micah 12 points that's a surprise that is a very big surprise because it was surprising because i knew that she was going through when she won yeah i knew that she was going through and i was like oh that's exciting and i had not I hadn't done the Red Stars math in my head, mm-hmm. so I didn't know who was going through. Um, I was sort of like, who is it? Forgetting about Suzu just because she didn't have a match on the yeah. card. So it was like, wait a minute, who's going through? But I was like, oh, is Micah finally going to break through this? She sort of has slotted in well at the upper mid-card gatekeeper. Mm-hmm. Like, you gotta beat me to get to the big-time She's the Ishii of yes. <laughs> Star. And then I realized that was this. Yeah. Got to the finals, beaten by Suzu. Um, yeah, and that was the five-star Grand Prix. Um, we made it through. I would say a whole, you know, I would say a very strong five-star Grand Prix. It I think was. I enjoyed this one more than I did yes. last year's. Yes. And certainly more than I did the years before, because I think two years ago I did not have a enjoyable time. The, the, past, the previous ones that I remember were just a slog. But there were many strong matches sort of strewn throughout mm-hmm. the entire tournament. Um, it helped to so have Ciari around, because even on the shows where everyone else was kind of just like, hey, whatever, it's a house show, we'll kind of put in half effort. She was going out there and killing it. Yeah. Uh, so that was the five-star Grand Prix. It does feel weirdly, it's like, oh my god, we've covered it for the last I know. two and a half months. I'm like, what is this show going to be? <laughs> but we'll have plenty of Joshi to cover, yeah. don't you worry. Don't worry, Stardom's going to have another tournament soon. Yes, uh, very soon. Uh, what else happened in Joshi? Well, a lot happened. Tokyo Joshi, the final Reiwa double-A cannon match happened uh, on September 18th. Uh, in Sendai Girls, they had their second big show, Mika Iwata defeating Millie McKenzie. I cannot In her it. second defense or something. I Very classic Sendai Girls booking, which is someone wins a title... Uh, I did mention in the Discord, and someone said, well, yeah, she lives in England, which makes sense. But they do this with many people. Yeah. Looking at the history of of Sendai Girls titles, you win it, you hold it for, like, 500 days, defending it one time, and then you lose it. And, like, again, I lost on the safest bet of all time that (laughs) Mika loses. (laughs) Uh, but happy to see her win. Get yeah. The, get the big uh, win. Very happy Miki for Takase her. announced that she does have an injury. Yeah, I saw uh, that. Today. So actually there are sh- things coming up that might be changing that are on this list. Because I know she is not... They're swapping her out on the Moondom show yeah, so for... Yeah, for Tehanma. Yes. Um, so yes, that is that. Uh, Marvelous Takumi Aroha retained the West Coast... Pro women's title against Sandra Moon, uh, visiting from West Coast Pro. But probably the biggest event of the last two weeks, title wise, Venny defeating Hikaru yeah. Shida. That's a big win for, for the Vinny. Regina DeWave title. Um, I have not seen that match, although I want to see that match. Very much so. Um, I'm sure it was great. And AEW talent going down. And Venny's already like, yep, I want to go defend this title in AEW. 
gr- that would be great. Run the I, match back with Sheeta on a show. Why not? I also think I think we talked about this last episode, but she is now permanently going by yes. Vanny, which does seem like she could be coming an over. An indication that she is coming over if she's like now I am only yeah Vanny. Uh, is there any chalk we didn't talk about this? I haven't. Show? I, I if there is, I haven't seen. You've it. Been I know surrounded uh, by toys. I, yeah. Uh, Hiroshima worked Choco Pro recently. <laughs> he uh, did the the double knees to Dr. Gore. Oh. Who's one of those Thailand guys that uh, Takanashi picked up. Classic. But, of course, the other thing we have to talk about... Yeah! <laughs> the show Sukeban. Oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> uh, and I'm just going to do a blow... I'm going to do a blow-by-blow blow because... Yep. It's fascinating from the beginning. <laughs> so I had gotten the ticket. The ticket had originally said 7 o'clock, so I thought the show was at 7, and it was... You could buy a first row seat for $100, or you could buy a GA ticket for $40. And I was like, I'm buying GA. Yeah, because GA is second uh, row. <laughs> yes, but I was like... But then I was like, oh, when do I have to get there? I got down there... Well, I then discovered that 7 was when the doors opened. Oh, okay. And the show started at 8. Okay. So I got down there at like 6.20. I was meeting my friend. He went to get food, and I told him, well, I'll go over there. I'll look, see what's going on. Yeah. I had been to the venue before, so I knew the venue. But I was like, let's just see what like what's happening. And at about 6.20, there was already a line. Oh, jeez. Not a super long line, probably 30 people, but okay, like but down still, the block. But and still. So I texted my friend. I said, I'm just going to get in line. Yeah. I don't know. We had no idea no. what it were there going to be <laughs> chairs. We didn't know. Were, was it going to be one row of GA chairs? <laughs> like, if there were, I wanted those chairs because I didn't want to stand. For There's, what I thought would be a long show and turned out to not no, be a long show. There is <laughs> nothing worse than a wrestling show where you have to stand. Yeah. Like, I just. I can't. I'm not doing that. Like, it, any of the Beyond Mania Weekend shows where they're like, oh, you can come, you can stand. I'm like, yeah. fuck you. I've been watching wrestling all day. I'm sitting. <laughs> um, and so at 7 o'clock, it was very orderly. They had, like, professional security guards in tuxedos. Hell yeah. Who checked our IDs, let us in. Um, and... We got into, like, the atrium, which isn't the main hall, but the atrium was set up like a carnival. Like a Japanese festival. Yes. And they had merch there, and they had food and drink. And so I thought, oh, okay, there's food and drink. Um, I don't really want to pay any money to eat or drink any of this. And they're like, don't worry, buddy. (laughs) But then I heard someone say, oh, it's free. And I was like, what? That can't be true. Insane. And I walked up to one of the booths, and a guy was coming up being like, oh, I want one of these beers. And they're like, okay, here you go. And he said, how much? And they were like, oh, it's free. And he was like, what do you mean it's free? And she was like, "It's just take it. Absurd. And so I was like, great. So I took a beer. I took a thing of popcorn. I was like, but it was so weird because the entire time, this was true of the whole show, I felt like I was stealing. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm taking, like, I was like, I'm taking this popcorn, and yeah. is someone going to stop me? That, that's, I would be doing that, too, because uh, it's just so anti-wrestling show, because typically you're just, like, going up, like, yeah, I want a, a bottle of water, and they're like, okay, but $8. Yeah, yeah, very expensive. So that, then we sort of stood in the atrium, and there was so, uh, there was sort of a moment, like, 740. Oh, they also gave us free programs. <laughs> Like cool. printed out nice. like booklet programs, which I was like, wow, this is very fancy. Around 7.40, everyone had sort of eaten and gotten their drinks, and we were all sort of standing waiting for the doors to open. Okay. Um, no one said anything to us. Like, no one was like, hey, the doors are opening at this time. Uh, be prepared. Nothing. So we were just standing. I was like, okay, I was near the front, so I said, I'm just going to keep standing here because... Yeah. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> At like 7.55, the doors opened, and we went in, and um, someone said behind me or next to me, somewhere around me as we sat down, it was set up very much like, you know, a chinkiba, yeah. the, the sort of wall of black 
yeah, yeah, yeah. bench chairs. Yes, yes, yes. It was like that on all three sides. Each spot had a pillow. Okay. A Sukeban branded <laughs> pillow, um, which I took at the end. Oh, you have to. Because, well, and then I went to take it and found it was taped down, and I was like, does this mean I shouldn't be taking this? But I walked out with it, like, in my hand, and no one was like, hey, don't do that. Stop, put that butt pillow um, down. So we went in, we sat down on the pillows, we waited like five minutes, they had a screen with a countdown clock on it, and then they're like, we're starting, the ring announcer came out. Uh, Wasn't the ring announcer anybody? Like, no, it okay. was like, I didn't, or not anyone I recognized. Yeah, I didn't recognize him either, I wasn't he, sure. He um, was very awkward, I would yeah. say, at least. <laughs> Certainly at the beginning, he clearly was not had never done wrestling because he didn't really have the rhythm down of no like hey here's this person then their music hits they come out and do something hey here's the next person like they were sort of running into each other and like the first match ended and as it was like one two three and they were like yeah and the music hit and the guy came in and he was like the second match is and yeah. i was like whoa i was like slow down he was ready to just <laughs> He was like, we don't have any time for this. And then near the end, there was a thing near the end that I know came through on the stream because someone's maybe you said it to me or someone said it to me. But he was announcing the winners, and you could hear the person next to him like whispering in his ear, telling, <laughs> yeah. being like, uh, the winner is um, whatever her name is, Unagi Saik, whatever her yeah. Sukeban name is. Yeah. And they were like... <laughs> And he was like, oh, oh, it's this person. <laughs> it was very much, it seems like they just found a guy that could announce things, I guess. Could and speak also speak Japanese. Japanese. Yes, because they did do the announcement in Japanese yeah. as well. They had a little, they had the video screen that ju I thought maybe, oh, they're going to show a lot of anime. They showed sort of the intro video, which is on their Twitter. Yeah, before. that was and about And then it. they would show sort of like a, like in a fighting game where you would like pick your people and then it would be like, yeah. This person, this person, and then it would be a still screen of like, yeah. it's this person against this person. And on the feed, they would kind of like hang on that for a little while, too. Um, matches were fine yeah. for the most part. It was clear that, you know, they probably weren't giving uh, top effort. I really liked the um, AoE uh, Inaba match. That was probably my Midnight favorite. Midnight Player too. versus the Stray Cat. Yeah. Which, one of the funniest things was the literal entrance music they got for almost everyone playing the freaking Stray Cat yeah. rag or whatever that song is called for Stray Cat. And she went in and around this room and I was like, this is very strange. Uh, but it was the one match near the end where they were like, we're going to go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, the main event finish totally botched. Yeah. Um, They're going to fix it in post. Very awkwardly, because he counted the three. He was like, the match is over. Sarah stood up, sort of stared at him, and they were like, well, we're going to keep wrestling. Yeah. Um, but very enjoyable. I, I think I counted. It was like 12 people on the card I had never seen live before, so I was like, great. That's like, cool as hell. Cross them off. I thought the gear, for the most part, looked good. Um, felt bad for Maya Yukihi because she was given a skirt for some... Like, the other two people in her group were given pants, I yeah. believe. She was given a skirt which would not cooperate with her in any no. way. And I was like, oh, give, <laughs> give her some pants. Yeah. Um, so, interesting. Interested. They announced, or... Kind of. Nagi let it slip that the next show is going to be in December in Miami. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But on the way out, I took my pillow. Um, I did buy some, I bought some buttons and some stickers. Okay. Which were like 15 bucks. I saw the sweaters and stuff. Yes. The shirts like, were expensive. The shirts were $50, so I'm like, and I don't really want a shirt, like a black shirt that says, and, you know, dangerous liaisons on it. Yeah, they didn't, the shirts weren't very well designed. They Which were is just why I was logo. like, oh, magnet or like pins are yeah. great and like stickers are great. These look good and they were really cheap. Yeah. And then I asked for a bag because I had my pillow. Uh, I had other stuff. And I was like, great. And then I noticed that they were giving away. They were like, oh, people take beers, take, you know, this while you leave. And I was like, oh, I'll go and I'll grab like one or two more yeah. beers. Uh, for the road. So I grabbed one or two, and as I'm trying to leave the table, the guy behind the table is like, 
we need you to take more. It's and so I was insane. like, okay, I'll take more. And like, I took one thinking, okay, I'll take like one or two more. Yeah. The guy reaches over the table and starts piling the beers into my bag. He's like, take them, take them, take them. I ended up with nine beers <laughs> and two cans of sake in my thing. I'm like carrying it home through the streets of New York, like this heavy bag of loose <laughs> beers. But I was like, this is so weird. Someone, I think it was my friend or someone, speculated that they booked the venue and you needed to get, like, a drinks package. That could be. Because it's, like, sort of a, it could be, like, a wedding venue, sort yeah. of a higher end venue where you're, like, you need to book a... That could and be. And then they were, like, well, we don't give a shit and we'll never, like, if we charge, we'll never get rid of any of this. Yeah. So just, like, give it away. Um, it's so it's just such an anti wrestling show thing. It's to such do. a strange like I left and the day after I thought it feels like a fever dream that yeah. I imagined going to this weird <laughs> like the show was only an hour and a half long, which was also very strange that because I had been to Grand Slam, yeah. AEW Grand Slam the night before, which started at six like six thirty and yeah. went till 12 15 like after midnight like the longest show where i was delirious yeah like watching these bad matches to go to a show and be like wow five matches with like boom boom, boom we're in and it's an hour and a half long yeah. i was like amazing this I, was, is great. I was watching on twitch which in, or not twitch sorry uh tiktok tiktok which in itself is a bizarre thing to do yeah and i was just like and then the show ended i was like oh that's it <laughs> yeah okay. so i was like okay um so that was my Sukeban experience. It was very strange. I do hope they come back to New York because, mm. I mean, $40, $40 included the seat, yep. like the program, the uh, pillow, drink, and popcorn. I'm like, for 40 bucks? Yeah. That's like the best wrestling deal that's I've ever gotten in insane. my whole life. <laughs> and so, not just one drink, 10 drinks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, technically, 10 drinks yeah. Yeah, that I had. Um so drinks for the road <laughs> we'll see i mean i said after i wouldn't be surprised if they disappeared they have to have are never heard from again but supposedly they're doing miami but we haven't heard anything no there's gotta be some deal in place like there's no way because it's so much money <laughs> i mean to fly everyone out they flew them out early they did photo shoots with them which i'm sure they had to pay them new gear for everyone for like the for like, okay, you're gonna be here for two days, but you're gonna be working on two of like, yeah, here for three days. You're working on two of the days. They have to. I'm just like, they had. Well, a, that's not my money. They that's had a I'm haberdasher. Saying. Yeah. Uh, like, so insane. Yeah. I hope they survive and don't disappear because I want more of this craziness. Yeah. Uh, but that was Sukeban. We did, as I mentioned at the top of the show. Uh, Ask for some questions. We got a few questions, so we'll go through them. The first one, though, uh, technically not a question. I could, I guess, phrase it like a question, but I won't. Uh, Sad Robot on the Voices of Wrestling Discord asked for a weird or gross Kelly story. I think we got some at the beginning of yeah. the podcast. Yeah, uh, let me tell but you about what, last weird, night. Yeah. So last night, I want we were going to go to uh, Dave & Buster's to watch the AEW show. Great. Because we are just like... Who's showing the show? Because originally we were like, oh, maybe a movie theater. We'll go to that. Yeah. I looked it up. There's no movie theaters around here. But it's like, oh, it's going to be at Dave & Buster's. I'm like, sure. Why not? It's listed on their website. It's listed on some AEW events page. We're like, sure. We called them to confirm they're doing it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, come, come on in. Like, should we make a reservation? And they're like, no, no, no. It's fine. You'll be all right. I'm like, okay, cool. So we show up. And we tell them, like, hey, you know, we got six here. We're here for the AEW show, so if you could seat us where we'll be able to see it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had to wait a little while to get our table. They sit us down at a table not big enough for six people. Uh, and then we go to our, our waitress. We're like, yeah, oh, it's the... You know, we came for the AEW show. Are you guys... Can you put it on the TVs? And she's like, I don't know what that is. We're like, the, the a wrestling show, the AEW. She's like, I'm going to have to write that down. I don't know what this is. <laughs> So we're like, all right. So she writes it down, and she goes, like, I'll talk to my manager about it. I'm like, okay. She goes, talks to him, and she's like, all right, I told him. Uh, we're going to put on some of the TVs. Great. It goes on two TVs, one that's, like, way the hell to the left of the table, and one directly behind us, because we're in, like, one of those booths where yeah. it's, like, the... Oh, in a corner? Yeah, in yeah, the corner yeah. thing. So 
there's one way the fuck over there and one behind us. <laughs> so like, awesome. So we thought like, hey, could we get like TVs we can see to have the show? Because also, here's the thing, the TVs we can see are playing literally nothing. <laughs> there is the NFL Sunday ticket thing up there, which was not having a game at the moment, so it's just like, oh, NFL Sunday ticket, call your direct TV. And we're like, that's literally nothing's happening over there. Some other TVs start changing. We're like, oh, they're going to go to the pay view. Great. They turn to The Simpsons. Because, <laughs> you know, everyone loves to watch The Simpsons with no audio. At Dave and Buster's. At Dave and Buster's. So we keep, like, pestering people. Like, our, our waitress. And another waitress we just grabbed. She's like, I know. She's like, I'm trying. I can't get, th- I can't make this happen. We're like, what? Okay. Our waitress comes back and we're like, What's, what's the deal? And she's like, well, so all the TVs are on one giant remote. And our manager's having a real hard time figuring out how to change the TVs. Like, okay, all right, cool. At which point then, all the TVs change at once to go to the Jets game. And actually, no, not at once. They went one by one. And so it's like, oh, they know how to change the TVs now. But still, there was one showing it directly behind us. Just look straight up. Yep. And so we tell our the our waitress, we're like, hey, can you bring your manager over? We're like, you did a great job. Yeah. We want you to know there's nothing wrong with you. We got to have a word with her. Because <laughs> at this like. Everything's going, like, the TVs are changing. My buddy is laughing so hard. I said, you know, a man once said, the apology must be as loud as the disrespect. (laughs) I did say fairly loudly that if this keeps up, I'm going to shit on the floor at one point. (laughs) The manager comes over and proceeds to lie her fucking ass off to her. Because she's like, oh, the TVs were just, it automatically happens. They all change over. Like, we watched them change one by one. <laughs> we watched, like, the guide number come up, and you change it. And she's like, oh, and we're like, you said us. We told you, like, hey, we're here for the pay-per-view. <laughs> so, I need, I don't normally give reviews to any, like, establishments. I'm leaving a review. <laughs> I'm calling this lady a dunce. <laughs> I'm gonna... I'm I'm letting it loose. I'm letting my inner my inner Karen out. We're gonna. Right. I'm was still, this the Times Square? It sure as hell uh, was. <laughs> David Buster's. Yeah. What oh a boy. shithole! Don't go there. It's uh, bad. In a movie theater. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's like a movie theater like right yes. next to it. Yes. And like, man, if it could have been at the movie theater, that would have been so much better that's very interesting because i thought last night when they mentioned oh dave and busters i know that dave and busters i'm like oh i wonder what it's like shithole watching it and sucks. i guess the answer is sucks ass. very bad got the most the driest chicken tenders of my life there i would say i would not recommend anyone aew pay-per-view or not go to the Times square dave and busters Mm-mm, don't do it um uh, not a, a high <laughs> Not high class, but not no. a high end no. uh, sort of establishment. I'm not entirely no. surprised that they could not get it together, which is why you have not. I have not seen Wrestle Dream. You haven't seen the um, the new era. You haven't seen the new era, the debut of uh, Momokogo in. Oh AW. yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, she can't leave. She has to do English commentary on Moondom. <laughs> Speaking of Moondom, oh no, we're not moving on. We have more questions. Forget that. Moondom's coming later. Speaking of Moondom, stick around. There you go. I fixed it. Uh, the first, I guess, official question of the show, have you watched anything from the Evolution talent yet? And if so, what are your thoughts? This from Gerard, co-host of Emerald Flosion. Flow Show. The Emerald Flow Show. That's Flow right. Show. <laughs> Uh, here on the wonderful Voices of Wrestling award-winning podcasting network. Check that out. Uh, I will say I have watched things from the Evolution Talent. I watched their debut show. Okay. I believe it was. Um, and I've seen, I think, one or two other 
shows that they have done, or not shows that they have done, but matches they have done. Um, what are my thoughts? I guess my thoughts are, well, my main thought is I'm always happy to have more talent in the independent Joshi scene that can be booked in many places because yep. oftentimes that talent becomes very stale. Yes. Very fast. And someone new debuts and they get used about 50 times in five days. Yep. And then you never want to see them again. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, hard to say yet. They're still very young. Um, and this is an all Japan offshoot? This is an all, okay. yes, all Japan offshoot. I believe all of them are still winless. I, be, I believe mm. I believe two of them, I don't remember, faced each other and to draws. Okay, makes sense. Um, I haven't watched the most recent show. Um, I have it, but I haven't gotten around to watching it. But I'm all for having more talent in the independent scene because I think the independent scene needs it and they're not developing, sort of through no fault of their own, not developing talent at a massive rate where, yeah. you know, new people are coming in all the time. So to get, you know, a handful of people all at once who can go on, you know, be on Sendai Girls shows, be on some other shows, which we'll be talking about coming up, I think is a net positive yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, honestly, I don't know much about them. I'm pretty sure I've seen them wrestle on shows, but nothing really stood out. But, you know, always good to have new young talent. The next question from, uh, also from Discord, Rika Tatsumi, Discord legend. So happy she listens to the show. Uh, said, between Spark, Kitsune, and Sukeban, which promotion would you prefer to be a regular in your area? Sukeban. No question. Sukeban does give away free yeah. uh, food and beverage, which really does tilt. And it's not even uh, that, though. It's just, Well, and the pricing, I think, is the, very... Not even that. They right. book... All Joshi talent. You don't have a whole bunch of Americans showing up. Like, you're not going to have Billy Starks and all other name a woman show up. But it's just like, hey, you've got the whole... It's all Joshi. It's like an authentic experience. So it's like, yeah, that's easily my pick. Yeah, I enjoyed Tsukiban, so that would probably be my pick. I mean, Kitsune has not happened yet. Yeah, I, I was like, I was gonna so, say, like, I don't know about that. A yet. little hard to choose that one. I think that one's happening on the twenty second of October. Um, I know it is going to be streaming on IWTV. Oh, nice. Um, or it's going to be on IWTV at some point. Yeah, but it'll be available. I saw to watch. that. I saw that um, as I was scrolling around IWTV earlier this week or something. Nice. Um, you know, Spark, I. Uh, the reviews from the first show were good. The, my main problem was um, uh, sort of knew where they were running. They were running in Jersey, which is sort of a haul for me to get to. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, it sort of has to be worth it in that aspect. And I'll say just for me personally, um, other people may feel differently. The tickets were very expensive. Okay. Um, standing room at Spark was, I believe, after all the fees and everything yeah. was calculated, was over eighty dollars. No, go fuck yourself. Um, uh -uh. Which is twice, as nope. I said, Sukeban forty dollars. Nope. I'm um, and it was an unknown. I'm upset. Thing for that first show, you know, I'm a lot more willing to spend forty dollars if. Sukeban would have been a massive trick yeah. that I showed up and there was no show that existed. I'm a lot less upset if that's a forty dollar investment than if that's an eighty dollar. I'm not going to spend eighty dollars and stand. There's I'm not, very I'm not few spend shows. Yes, thirty dollars and stand. <laughs> very few shows I would spend eighty dollars. No, that's on. absurd. No. Um, and I think you're right, but I also think the best thing, even if it wasn't all Joshi talent. Sukeban brought in people, like I said, even... It's not uh, you the know, same I, But I've been to Japan. I've seen Joshi shows in Japan. So I've seen some people. I've seen some people here in the States. They brought in people who don't cut, you know. Yeah. Risa Nakajima is not coming to no. the United States every month. I love Maki Ito, but saying, oh, She's we have Maki Ito on the time. show. I've seen Maki Ito two times in the past <laughs> two months. Like, which is great for me. Yeah. I live in New York. Some people maybe can't do that. But 
Miriam Mashta. I've seen Miriam Mashta a couple times. Mm-hmm. Like, some of these people are people where I'm like, okay, that's great that you got them, but this person can be seen. Yeah, they're pretty many active. Many times over. They're active here. In the United States. So, probably Sukiban. Also, I just, they're such a strange, like, it's so strange that I'm like, I'm endeared to this oh, now. Yeah. Because... I want it to succeed it's so, so much. It's so bizarre. <laughs> and I want to see the final product of like this weird anime yeah. TV show. Like, what's that going to look like? Like, I just, I so desperately do not want this to be some weird front for something. <laughs> uh, but the next question, speaking of Rika Tatsumi, uh, a two-part question, one sort of less serious than the other. How excited are you for Rika Tatsumi in the NWA? Uh, and we will talk about that some when we talk about the preview for Wrestle Princess 4. Uh, I don't want Rika Tatsumi in the NWA. <laughs> She's going to take over Tyrus's spot. Uh, she'll probably draw better. Yeah. She's going to go on Fox News. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, I don't know. I like the NWA when they relaunched, and yeah. it just now feels sort of poisoned yeah it's, um, I, you couldn't at this point you could not pay me to watch that show uh and the sort of more serious question there have been quite a few departures from cyber fight recently do you see anyone leaving tokyo joshi pro wrestling i i a, a couple months ago i would have said kamiyu and I believe Junior, yes, uh, Junior T three seven K in the Discord did ask this, and they did bring up uh, Kamiyu possibly leaving because we had talked about that on the show. She was getting beat like a drum. The idea that maybe she was leaving, but now maybe she's not leaving. I mean, the thing about Joshi is you never know. It's like people all of a sudden announce, and you're like, I never expected that, and that's yeah. Like I'm trying to think of the last person who retired who I thought, ah, I saw that coming from a mile. Like, <sighs> Yeah. Unless they're very old, like, you're like, oh, okay, this person is... Yeah, it's just they retire, and it's like, well, you still had all this time ahead of you. If I had to pick... hmm. I mean, I guess my pick would probably be someone like... Not Yuka Sakazaki, but someone who would be like, oh, I'm... Like, Maki Ito. Maki Ito would be To be like, oh, I'm actually just going to go to America now and wrestle. Yeah. Like, Like, that's... I could totally see that. But I don't know. I... There's also rumors, I'm not an expert on this, but in terms of men's wrestling, like, that these departures are all part of a new promotion that's going to happen, and I'm assuming that they're not fishing for, like, Suzume. Yeah. I love, like, Suzume's going to be my upcoming answer for something else, so that's why she's on my mind. But it doesn't seem like they're looking for women, because we haven't nah. heard about any women leaving promotions randomly, as we have with the men side so there's so much with that new promotion popping up thing that i'm just like i i'm not gonna worry about any of it because i don't know if any of it's gonna happen and then finally the final question from um team sting steve borden love that guy uh asked who do you think will be the next first which i believe means who will be the next first time Princess of Princess champion, Kelly. That's my pick. I think you're going to Oh, s- hell yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be Kelly. I'm, no. <laughs> I'm going to train really hard. Um, I guess, like... I mean, the safe answer is Maki Ito, right? Because it's like she hasn't... She hasn't. Well, no, she's had it. Has she? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to look this up. Because she had international princess, right? Oh, you're totally right. Ignore me. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I think the safe bet is Maki Ito, just because she hasn't had it. Um, I'm trying to think who else. The Princess of Princess champions are as follows. Miyu Mashita, you. Me? Yuka, <laughs> Yuka Sagazaki. Reika Saiki, not going to win it, she's retired. Yeah. Uh, Shoko Nakajima, Rika Tetsumi, and Mizuki. Yeah, so I... Maki Ito is the pro- is the safe bet. I don't know. I think her... I think that... That ship is kind of sailed. I think the ship has sailed. I think if they were going to do it, they would have done it already. Yeah. And now they're just sort of like... She's a person who doesn't need a title because she's very popular. She feels like... 
Nakamura in his later period of New Japan, where he was like the Intercontinental Title guy. Yeah. So that I I think that could yeah. So not Maki Ito then. Who else is around that it could be? I mean, I'm gonna say Miyu Watanabe just because. Oh I'm, yeah, duh. Yes. I also think they sort of need to because I don't know. You can't keep going back to old reliable. Yes, but also you don't want someone to leave because you're like, oh, you have to wait another three years to yes. be champion. Um, now I'm just sort of looking at the roster. I would say Miyu Watanabe is up. If we were doing a sort of top-tier betting system. Haruna Neko. <laughs> Haruna Neko. Oh, 6.45 on cage match. Shockingly higher than Mihiro Kiryu. You know, if someone would... Going back to a previous question of people that I could see leaving, Kaya Toribami purely because her other work might just be like, hey, we, we need you more often or something. Possibly. <laughs> like, that's one where I, I, I don't think it would be like, oh, she's making the jump. It's just like, oh, I she's need to go do other stuff. I think it would be... Okay, Miyu Watanabe, I think Yuki Arai... Oh, yeah. It's probably yeah. up on the higher tier. Is there anyone else? Because I think anyone else, uh, probably not. I mean, potentially Misao, if they decide to go all in on her. I don't. It seems like if I she didn't do it now, she yeah. won't do it. I would love for it to happen. I don't think it will. Like, who's <laughs> after that, though? Because then there's, like, Endo, Akari Noah, um, Endo, Akari Noah... Suzume, like that sort of group of people who I guess would be next, but I can't conceive any of them. No, not yet at least. Winning anytime soon, but I hope it's me. Like Suzume, I think could get there. I could see her being a viable contender in a handful of years, maybe. Um. But yeah, um. So my pick is Miyu Watanabe. Yep. Same. Agree. My hope, it's my pick, and also my hope. Yeah. Um, and that is our question segment for this week. So let's talk about what's coming up in the next two weeks of Joshi on October 4th, two days from now. Moondom! Hold on. I just saw something in these notes that I cur- cur- cannot believe. Uh, there will be... It, it's taking place at Diana's... Uh, like there's dojo. A, a dojo show? Uh, okay. Yes. So very small venue. Uh, it will have English commentary and announcements and supposedly meet and greets or something like that. Uh, Momo Kogo is doing the English commentary for the show. On her own or does she have someone with her? Uh, they've just announced her, so she may be on her own or I don't know. Maybe Ooh. they'll have someone else. Maybe they'll drag in And unless on. I misread this, it is $100 a ticket. Absurd. No, no, thank you, sir. Can some? I don't know. Maybe I read it maybe, wrong, or, or maybe the or, translation was wrong. But or maybe there's meet and greets involved, like guaranteed. Oh, guaranteed. Like meet that greets, could yeah. be then. I, like you get a a checky, or what is it? Two shot? Is that what they call them? Yeah. Either you, you get one guaranteed or something. So maybe that's part of it. Because a hundred dollars is way the fuck too much. Um. Yeah. So very expensive. I think they, ah, yes. Um, Oh, no, that's not it. There were some injuries, as we mentioned earlier. I'm trying to look for the official um, announcement of those, and I'm not finding it. So, uh, sorry if any of these are wrong. Uh, (laughs) Sai Ida will take on Itsuki Aoki. Cool. Uh, In a singles match, Hanan and Waka Tsukiyama will take on Yuko Sakurai and Yuna Mizumori. Sure. And then I believe Miyuki Takase is injured and yes. is being replaced by uh, Te Hanma. Yep, I saw that. Teaming with Ami Sore to take on Micah and Haruka Umasaki. Uh, not, um, not, not Karma. Not Karma? No, Karma <laughs> lost the tag titles at uh, New oh, Blood 11. Really? So, um, she's, so I wonder if that gimmick's just dead now. <laughs> We shall see, but that is Moondom coming up on the 4th. And then on the 9th, the next big stardom show, Nagoya Golden Fight 2023. 
Uh, it will start with a gauntlet tag match. Shuri versus Mina Shirakawa in a UWF rules match. Fuck, sure, let's go. <laughs> uh, Saki Kashima will take on May Sierra in a high-speed title, and I'm hoping May Sierra wins. Wasn't the setup of that match was May lost, and then Saki came out and was like, I love wrestling losers. You want a title shot? <laughs> like, I'm... If it wasn't the setup for this match, it was a previous match. It was, or either way, hilarious. <laughs> well, Saki I, was ducking her. Yeah. Uh, at one point, um, ghosting her or gaslighting her, whatever you want to say. Uh, then there will be an artist of stardom titled match. Julia, Mai Sakurai, and Tekla will take on Suzu Suzuki, Micah, the two finalists from the Five Star Grand Prix, and Megan Bain. The Megasis. The Megasis sticking around again. Do you think there's a title change here? Um, I would say no, because I think we're going to see Suzu and Micah have a can-they-coexist moment after that match, and it might all fall apart. Also, have you seen Mai has, has money now? Like, she has Okada books. Yes, and she's French. Yep. As, I mean, as you are when you hang out in Julia's orbit for long enough. Yes. You become a cartoon French person. Uh, the next match, I don't think I've seen an official announcement on what's going on, but this <laughs> match clearly is not happening. Absolutely cursed. Uh, Natsupoi injured, and Sayori Ano, the tag champions would be taking on Azumi and Utami, who is also injured. I don't think they've announced a replacement for that, although I may have missed it. If I'm Sari and Azumi, I'm not leaving the house. <laughs> I'm not getting cursed. Um, then the Kyrie send-off match, most likely, high percentage chance this is Kyrie's last match uh, ever in stardom, and that match is Kyrie. Mayu Iwatani and Nanai Takahashi taking on Hazuki, Koguma, and Saeeda. That match should be a lot of fun. Yeah. I I still think it would be absolutely hilarious if Kyrie gets to WWE and they're like, fuck, no, you're, we didn't hire go you. Back. Go back home. And more budget cuts. Yep. Like, that's... Turn right back around. Yeah, like, I wouldn't be shocked at all if that happens. Um, I guess we'll see, although it's, this last run in Stardom didn't really do much. No, she was so, a, a pretty much a non-factor. So I think probably she likes the relaxing retirement of WWE. Yeah, gets to sit in the home, she gets her meals on scheduled time. And they, then... She falls asleep in the front room, they put a blanket on her. And then in the semi-main event, Mirai will defend her Wonder of Stardom title against Momo Watanabe Kelly title change. Fuck it, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Momo's kind of on an upward trajectory, why not? And then truly a match designed for the enjoyment of Kelly. Oh, Jesus. For the World of Stardom title, it will be Tom Nakano defending against Natsuka Tora. I... I... I don't want to see that. Kelly, on a scale of 9 to 10, how excited are you to see that match? It's got to be 11. Uh, but that is Nagoya Golden Fight. There is no rest for the injury-ridden roster. Yeah, maybe there, sh <laughs> maybe there should be a rest. Maybe this is going to tell them, like, hey, we need to give people some time off. Well, maybe they'll take a rest the fuck apart. on October 15th when the Tag League opener Jesus happens. Christ. Yeah, and you know, I think about this every now and then, how Big Japan, I don't know if they still do it. I know they used to. They had a policy for their deathmatch guys where every couple of months... Like, at least, I think it was every six months or so, you would take a month off from death matches to let your body heal and stuff. And they would, like, go in a cycle where it would just be like, all right, we need to cycle this guy out for a month, let him heal up, and then they can come back. Like, that's a good policy. Again, I don't know if they still do it or not, but, like, with the schedule that Stardom works, they should do something like that. <laughs> uh, well... We'll see. Maybe this will be eye-opening, and maybe it won't be. I, I hope it is, because if we see more and more injuries popping up, they need to take care of their wrestlers. 
Well, and we'll see what happens in the tag league. Although that's usually pretty. That's relaxing. usually everyone takes a break. Yeah. Uh, what else is coming up? Seedling has a show on October tenth. Uh, headlined well, the semi-main event: Seri and Arisa Nakajima teaming together, an uneasy alliance to take on Kaori Ito and Tomoko Watanabe. That's a cool team. And the main event will be Ayame Sasamura and Riko Kaiju, the tag champions, defending. Against the dynamic duo of La Pedita and Kekedita. What a strange main event. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe the mass superstars will. I still love Verge Victorious. I love that stipulation of if you lose, you got to put a mask on. <laughs> You're not you anymore. And now Kekedita has a um, actual roster photo instead of the photo <laughs> they took of her when she first put the mask on and it was very loose and didn't look good. Uh, she now has an official photo, so that's very nice. Speaking of Evolution, Ryu Mizunami will take on Chi Chi. Ah. From Evolution. So there's one. And then a big four, uh, eight person, four on four. Mima Shimoda, Makoto, Saki Akai, hey. and Veni taking on Natsu Samire, Miyuki Takase, well, not anymore, yeah. uh, Itsuki Aoki, and Misa Kagura. So that should be fun. That's an interesting match. But the biggest show of the next two weeks, by far, Tokyo Joshi Wrestle Princess 4. Hell yeah. On October 9th, the card is opening. Well, I don't know that this is the official order, but... I'll just say it is. It like looking at it like yeah, this all seems like right. Yeah. Uh, Haru Karashiro versus Runa Okuba, two youngsters. The children go at it. Who wins? Uh, I need to go through my head of which one is which. I'm just gonna say Runa. <laughs> I'm gonna say they go to a time limit draw. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next match, six person tag: Arisa Endo, Kaya Torabami, and Himawari. Will f- take on Harukaze, returning returning to Tokyo Joshi for the first time in quite a while. Uh, Yoshiko Hasegawa and Riara. So that's and, a uh, that's a Ganjo team. Yes, I am. They gonna, like to do this on the big. I'm gonna say the Ganjo team picks up the win. All right, a bold prediction. The next match, the Karate Kids explode. What? Mocha Miyamoto, who will, I will guarantee it right now on this program, will be wearing brand new gear. Yeah. You know, they say you have to be the change you want to see in the world, and that is what is happening right now. I am saying that she will have new gear. She's just going to be a fucking mummy. <laughs> She's going to have new gear, and it will be even, it'll be a monkey's, pod. I've now yeah. monkey pod yeah. myself. Oh, it's going to be so much even fabric. worse gear. Uh, if Juria loses this match, she we'll needs to wear mo- all of Mocha's old gear. All at once. Every piece. Yes, Mocha Miyamoto taking on Juria Nagano. I think, well, do you think Juria wins here? That one's kind of uh, up in the air. Mocha's really gotten the push. Yeah, Mocha could win. We'll see, but should be a, uh, a match I'm looking forward to. Yeah, no, that should be really good. And, boy, if Mocha has new gear... <laughs> this podcast will never hear the end of you it. You willed it into existence. Then all the people are like, oh my god, they always talk about how bad the gear is. Then I'm going to drive people <laughs> nuts. I'm going to talk about how good the gear is every show. And how they made the gear happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next match, of course, Big Show isn't a big Tokyo Joshi show without Aja Kong who will, de- who will debut, who will tag with Raku and Shino she knows Suzuki taking on Hyper Misao, Wakane Uihara, and Toga. An yes, interesting team good there. Misao with the children again. Love it. Aja Kong and Raku together again. The best friends. I mean, this is classic Tokyo Joshi. Yep, and you Joshi. know there's going to be nonsense throughout. It'll so I'm I'm very excited for this. Then the next match, Ryo Mizunami and Yuki Aino will take on Miyu Watanabe and Yuki Arai. Yuki is, v. Yuki. Is this like a best of of Mizunami's passion injection matches? Yeah, and we'll see. It's an interesting match. Yeah. Who do we think wins? Who picks up the pin? 
Um, I'm betting Miu pins uh, Ayano. I'm going to say Yuki Arai. <laughs> no, sorry, let me go back. I'm going to say Yuki wins. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, Safe I'm not going to say that, no. Um, I respect it. I think Yuki Arai is going to pin Ryo Mizunami, just to be really wild and different than you. Because uh, why not? All right, t- time, we're, Taylor, I need to ask your opinion on some restaurants. Okay. Uh, so after this, we're gonna, me and my friends, you're invited. Uh, we are going to go to uh, Junior's Cheesecake Factory or whatever the fuck it's called. Okay. <laughs> do, you, do you like that place? Do you know anything about this um, place? Um, I do. There is a location, one on 45th and one on 49th. Do you know if it, one is better than the other? Um, is one, I have been to both of them, and I would say, I mean, they're differently laid out. Okay. I would say selfishly, um, trying not to reveal my personal um, information <laughs> yes. over the air. <laughs> I prefer the 49th one because it is closer to where I live. Okay. Than the 45th one. Okay. I mean, they're both relative. I mean, there's really nothing major. They're laid out differently, but you're not going to get different. Yeah. All right. I just said Taylor says the 49th one is better. Yes. (laughs) Um, All right. Back to the preview. (laughs) Back to the preview. Uh, And a (laughs) Junior's uh, Cheesecake, if you want to sponsor us. Yeah. Let us know. A free plug. Um, the next match, a Neo Bashiki Goon, uh, what do we want to call it here? Reunion match? Um, yeah. Saki Sama, May San Michel, Marta, and Yukio San Laurent <laughs> will take on Shoko Nakajima, Suzume, Palm Harajuku, and Antonio Honda. What a what match. What a match. Okay. So, there's a guy that looks a lot like Yukio Saint Laurent, uh, Yukio Sakaguchi, you may have heard of him. Yes. He laughs so much at Antonio Honda <laughs> when they're in a match together. I would love to see if these, if Antonio Honda has that sort of chemistry with Yukio Saint Laurent as well. We'll have to see. And, of course, we always appreciate every new Mishiki Goon match, yep. even though we'll be seeing them for... Decades and years to come. Years and years to come. Um, But a great, I mean, Susan May getting getting a big uh, sort of spot here in the last, well, no, the, well, not the last non-title match, but the last, um... Multi-person. Multi-person. That's not Non-title. Yes. (laughs) Um, Because the last non-title match is a special single match, Nyla Rose... Taking on Maki Ito. Nyla wins that, right? I think so. I mean, yeah. A-D- LOL, AEW wins. Yeah. <laughs> so, they take care of their AEW people. Um, but should be a fun match. Yeah. Nyla enjoys coming to Japan, mm-hmm. which I like. And she and Maki um, should be uh, have a fun dynamic. Yeah. Oh, that, yes. Like, I don't think it'll be a serious match, but I think it'll be a fun match. But the first of three title matches, the Princess Tag Team titles, vacant currently, yeah, that's right. <laughs> will be guaranteed to be held by new champions yeah. when Yuki Kamafuku and Mahiro Kiryu take on free Wi-Fi Hikari Noah and Nao Kakuda. I believe Kamafuku and Kiryu pledging not to use Wi-Fi. <laughs> In the lead up to the match, using only data. Wow. Uh, They're going to run that bill up. Because I think Kiryu said that you have to be careful about free Wi-Fi because people can steal your information. She's not wrong. Uh, but do you, who do you think raises the title as first-time champions? I want it to be free Wi-Fi. But I could very well see Kamiyu and Kiryu picking up the win just because of suddenly... Kamiyu's got this push behind her, and she's seemingly more motivated. So it's like, you know, I could see it going either way. Personally, I want free Wi-Fi to win. I think I'm also going to say free Wi-Fi. I think they're a very established team. I think Akari Noah had the International Princess title run, uh, which I liked. Um, So I'm going to pick them. All right. Free Wi-Fi for everyone. Free Wi-Fi. 
Then the semi-main event is a double title match. The International Princess title and the NWA World Women's Television title. Gosh, that's a mouthful. Uh, both on the line, Rika Tatsumi, the International Princess title, will take on Max the Impaler, who is the NWA World Women's Television Champion. Do you think Rika Tatsumi joins the long lineage, Danny Hodge and Rika Tatsumi in the same I, company's lineage? This one's hard. I think it's going to be a draw somehow. Like I don't know if it's count out. A double count out. I wonder if they do like a DQ. They might. Maybe Max like snaps. Yeah. I think it's going to be some shenanigans where... Well, because would the, the NWA women's title probably wouldn't change hands on a count out. Um, I think that, I mean... I will plead to ignorance about the the rule set of the NWA. World yeah, World World so World. I'm gonna go with Rico wins by countout, and then Max does not lose the title that way, and they both leave with their <laughs> their respective belts. I'm gonna take a risk and say Max wins both titles. I think if we're going where one of them has to walk out with both titles, I think it's Max. And then the main event for the Princess of Princess title, Mizuki, the champion, defending against former multi-time champion, Miyu Yamashita. I think Mizuki retains. Yeah, her. easy easy pick there, Mizuki I think retains. this is her last big victory, and then I think she gets the big victory over Miyu, and then she can drop the title to yep. someone else. Yeah. So that is Wrestle Princess 4. We will definitely be covering that on the next show uh also coming up for tokyo joshi is their next go girl show which is go girl all women audience oh that's right show. those are cool i like those uh happening on october 15th uh sendai girls has two shows sendai girls have sendai girls has has sendai girls has sendai girls is the name of the promotion yeah. sendai yeah. girls have Whatever. <laughs> the company known as Sendai Girls has two shows coming up. There we go. Uh, on October 6th and 7th, uh, matches that stuck out to me. Dash Shizako versus Sayori Ano in a singles match. That should be good. And sadly, a match. Uh, whoops. Uh, Mika Iwata and Miyuki Takase, no longer, taking on Eureka, Oka, and Veni. That would have been a cool match if it match. happened in that way. Uh, Ice Ribbon is doing a number one contender tournament for the Ice Infinity title. Uh, Saran and Miho Ashida both won matches to get to the next round. Uh, Totsuro Satsuki and Yumi will face off with each other on the other side. That will be their first match because it's a funky okay. uh, bracket. But the winner of those two matches will face off to be the number one contender. All right. Diana has a show, uh, some fun matches. They have a secret Captain Fall match. Kari Yonayama, Makoto, Deborah K, Kaho Kobayashi, and Risa Sarah will take on Aja Kong, Tei Hanma, not Miyuki Takase. <laughs> oh, boy. You don't realize how much some of these people wrestle until you... Until they're out. They're out, and you have to say their name over and over again. Uh, Kakaru Sekaguchi and Maika Ozaki... Uh, Sai Ida will appear on that show at, along with Ami Sore in a six person tag match. Uh, Jaguar Yakota will defend her Elizabeth Championship against Shinobu Kandori and Yuki Miyazaki. And the tag championships will be on the line. Uh, Ayako Sato and Hanako Nakamori will defend against the Inoue's Kyoko Inoue and Takako Inoue. And that is what is happening in Diana, and that is what is happening in the world of Joshi wrestling yep. in the next two weeks. Kelly, uh, you've said a lot. I've said this. a lot. I've said a lot in this episode. Yeah. Are you all set out? I'm all set out. I ain't got. I ain't yeah, have yeah. anything else. I got one more day of Toy Fair ahead of me, and then and then you can get out of this hell. And then I can get out of this. Never return. <laughs> and then you'll go to the great non-problematic. No, New Orleans. Nolans. 
Another town where I've had horrible experiences. They're not well, horrible. I, I'll say... I, I do like... I genuinely do enjoy this city. But again, as a visitor, I would never live here. <laughs> I love New Orleans also before anyone accuses me of... Yeah, New Orleans is cool. Uh, bias. That's where my family is from. Oh. Uh, so, it's a great city. Um, I just think, like New York. Yeah. I have to say, enough of Kelly. Kelly gets the last word every show. <laughs> you get it this but time. But he spent oh, an hour and a half trashing New York City. <laughs> but you know what? Only the strong can survive in New York City, and Kelly is weak. New York strong. <laughs> Kelly is weak. Uh, no, it's a great... Uh, New York is a great city. You know, not perfect, as no city is. No. Um, but there's always a lot going on. It's a place of great excitement and energy. Yep. And just like the world of Joshi Pro Wrestling. It sure which is. Which we have covered this week and we'll cover again in, two, in weeks. two weeks' time once again. I'll have actually watched something by then. Once again, cruelly separated by the laws of geography. Yeah. But uh, You'll be we, back through the computers rather than in person. We hope you've enjoyed this special... Maybe once in a lifetime, <laughs> uh, live episode, live episode of Jumping Bomb Audio, and we will see you, see you next We're week. We're coming to your Not house. Not next week. Well, let me start that over. We won't see you next week. We will talk to you in two weeks' time. Goodbye. Bye. Do you like wrestling trivia? Then check out the five-star match game, the Pro Wrestling Quiz Show. I'm Joe Gagney, and every episode... I grill three contestants with five rounds of power-packed wrestling trivia. We have over 30 evergreen episodes in the archives covering WWE, AEW, Japan, Mexico, and much, 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 much more. Play along at home and check it out today. Hey, everybody. My name is Jesse Collings, and I want to tell you all about my show, The Gentleman's Wrestling Podcast, here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. On The Gentleman's Wrestling Podcast, we do a thorough analysis on the biggest issues and trends within the pro wrestling industry. We talk a lot about pro wrestling media. We talk a lot about fan culture and wrestling's place within general pop culture. And we talk about the broader influences that are shaping the way we discuss and analyze the pro wrestling industry. We've had some of the brightest minds in the pro wrestling intelligentsia on the show, including WrestleNomics host Brandon Thurston, both Rich Krejci and Joe Lanza from the Flagship Wrestling Podcast, Trevor Dame from the Through the Years Podcast, and a whole lot more. This isn't a show for hot takes. It's not a show recapping the latest episode of television. This is a show focusing on the biggest topics in pro wrestling and doing a deep dive on the real stories behind the surface level analysis you might find elsewhere. The Gentleman's Wrestling Podcast is available wherever you get your podcasts, and we'd really appreciate it if you gave us a try. Thanks.